A reading from the book of Numbers. Today is June 1st. Our reading from the book of Numbers is chapter 35. The Lord spoke to Moses in the steps of Moab at the Jordan near Jericho, saying, Instruct the Israelite people to assign out of the holdings a portion to them, towns for the Levites to dwell in. You shall also assign to the Levites pasture land around their towns. The towns shall be theirs to dwell in, and the pasture shall be for the cattle they own and all their other beasts. The town pasture that you are to assign to the Levites shall extend a thousand cubits outside the town wall all around. You shall measure off 2,000 cubits outside the town on the east side, 2,000 on the south side, 2,000 on the west side, and 2,000 on the north side, with the town in the center. That shall be the pasture for their towns. The towns that you assign to the Levites shall comprise the six cities of refuge that you are to designate for a manslayer to flee to, to which you shall add 42 towns. Thus the total of the towns that you assign to the Levites shall be 48 towns with their pasture. In assigning towns from the holdings of the Israelites, take more from the larger groups and less from the smaller, so that each assigns towns to the Levites in proportion to the share it receives. The Lord spoke further to Moses. Speak to the Israelite people and say to them, When you cross the Jordan into the land of Canaan, you shall provide yourselves with places to serve you as cities of refuge to which a manslayer who has killed a person unintentionally may flee. The cities shall serve you as a refuge from the avenger so that the manslayer may not die unless he has stood trial before the assembly. The towns that you thus assign shall be six cities of refuge in all. Three cities shall be designated beyond the Jordan and the other three shall be designated in the land of Canaan. They shall serve as cities of refuge. These six cities shall serve the Israelites and the resident aliens among them for refuge, so that anyone who kills a person unintentionally may flee there. Anyone, however, who strikes another with an iron object so that death results is a murderer, the murderer must be put to death. If he struck him with a stone tool that could cause death and death resulted, he is a murderer. The murderer must be put to death. Similarly, if the object with which he struck him was a wooden tool that could cause death and death resulted, he is a murderer. The murderer must be put to death. The blood avenger himself shall put the murderer to death. It is he who shall put him to death upon encounter. So too, if he pushed him in hate or hurled something at him on purpose and death resulted, or if he struck him with his hand in enmity and death resulted. The assailant shall be put to death. He is a murderer. The blood avenger shall put the murderer to death upon encounter. But if he pushed him without malice, a forethought or hurled any object at him unintentionally or inadvertently dropped upon him any deadly object of stone and death resulted, though he was not an enemy of his and did not seek him harm, in such cases, the assembly shall decide between the slayer and the blood avenger. The assembly shall protect the manslayer from the blood avenger, and the assembly shall restore him to the city of refuge to which he fled. And there he shall remain until the death of the high priest who was anointed with the sacred oil. But if the manslayer ever goes outside the limits of the city of refuge to which he has fled, and the blood avenger comes upon him outside the limits of his city of refuge, and the blood avenger kills the manslayer, there is not blood guilt on his account. For he must remain inside his city of refuge until the death of the high priest. After the death of the high priest, the manslayer may return to his land holding. Such shall be your law of procedure throughout the ages in all your settlements. If anyone kills a person, the manslayer may be executed only on the evidence of witnesses, the testimony of a single witness against a person shall not suffice for a sentence of death. You may not accept a ransom for the life of a murderer who is guilty of a capital crime. He must be put to death. Nor may you accept ransom in lieu of flight to a city of refuge, enabling one to return to live on his land before the death of the priest. You shall not pollute the land in which you live, 
for blood pollutes the land, and the land can have no expiation for blood that is shed on it, except by the blood of him who shed it. You shall not defile the land in which you live, in which I myself abide, for I the Lord abide among the Israelite people.